Yeah, I think you said it, uh, you know, which is we are more confident on the U.S. growth outlook. We think there are good reasons for that. You know, real income growth looks to be, you know, pretty firm, and we think that will continue to be the case. I think the global industrial cycle, which was, you know, going through a pretty soft patch this year, we think is showing some signs of bottoming out, including in parts of Asia. So we feel pretty confident about that. And then I think probably the most interesting thing is exactly what you mentioned, that, you know, yes, there is the possibility of uh, policymakers uh, you know, providing a bit more insurance, being a bit more friendlier now that inflation has come down quite meaningfully. And we saw some evidence of that even recently where the tightening in financial conditions, you saw a number of Fed speakers kind of push back a bit against that. So I think that that combination of things, the, the lessening drag from policy, stronger, uh, you know, industrial cycle uh, and real, real income growth makes us pretty confident that the Fed can stay on hold at this plateau. The interesting nature is that as soon as we've had a batch of bad news or weaker news, the markets responded with more optimistic behaviors. And of course, what we've seen that yield come down, that the Fed members have all been talking about doing some of the work for them, that started to fade. And you've got this appetite to go back into riskier parts of the market. Does that stick around or is that just a, a little window of opportunity for investors? No, I think that's exactly right. I think it starts, it sticks around, and I think you'll see it more and more. I mean, one way to think about it is, for the last couple of years, really, the driving force of volatility in markets has been inflation and inflation shocks. You know, as you go forward, as inflation is, you know, nearer in the vicinity of targets in many places, I think the, 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 the prominence of growth shocks is going to matter more. And the more the Fed and other policymakers care about growth shocks, the more likely they are to be somewhat friendlier. And the market, then, as you said, investors can feel a little bit more confident that perhaps a weak version of the Fed put starts to come into play and they can venture a little bit further into, into riskier assets. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know if you'd allow me then, Kamakshi. I want to talk just about EMs perhaps a little mm -hmm. bit as well. And and really, we've, we've actually got this graph, if we'll take a look at it. It's just the MSCI, uh, particularly with regards to EM equities over the last five years. It hasn't gone anywhere, really, right. even over the 10-year span. But at the same time, when one takes a look at the MSCI X US, there's been a similar trend with regards to that too. Uh, is, it, is it just a case then that EMs should or could be as intriguing and attractive over the next couple of years as maybe, you know, perhaps even Europe or, 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 or US somewhat? Look, I think what has really happened, and I think your, your chart shows that, is that, you know, the U.S. has been special over the last decade in yeah. some sense, you know, whether it's true of the, the high levels of yields you get there, but also the, 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 the exceptional performance of the stock market, particularly the large few stocks, you know, the, the, the tech, the Magnificent Seven, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and everyone else has been aside. And so I think exactly like you said, the EM equities ex China have kept pace with DM equities ex the US. Yeah. And so I think if we see a more balanced global growth picture going forward, which is, you know, part of our forecast that you see a little bit better growth in Europe, perhaps even China stops slowing from the kind of, you know, pace that it's been at, uh, that does bode well for EM equities overall. But I still think that one of the features of our, our, our forecast and our outlook is that the US is still a high bar to beat. 